All right, what's up, Paul Squad? Welcome back to my whole banging recap marathon. So I got another recommended vid that I just got from my subscribers, and it's another Sam Bram recap. And this is his Cyberpunk Torn Sensor recap, and this one is called Offense Liberty and he's ready for worse. So yes, um, Fans Liberty, like I said before, you've seen my previous first time ever seeing Sam Bram Cyberpunk Torn Sensor vid. I actually, you know, react to all the main endings of the game itself, not the Fans Liberty DLC endings. Which, by the way, I actually think I got the best ending. Of the of the fence liberty, you know, I freaking love fence liberty. It's one of my favorite DLCs of all time, and that's what made for me for me honestly that made the game much better. An absolute ten out of ten masterpiece. So I'm excited to see what's the other endings of the fence liberty DLC. So without further ado, we're going to check out Sam Bram's Sour Part 2077 fence liberty DLC endings from worst to best right now. Let's check it out. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Since today is the end of the year, in this video I'm going to be ranking all four of Phantom Liberty's endings from worst to best, going over the various story consequences, morality of different decisions, and varying rewards in order to decide which is best. Yeah. I know opinions differ wildly on this, so I very much look forward to reading the comments. But first, on with the video. Awesome. Spoiler alert if you've not played Defense Lib DLC, by the way bottom of my list then, and let me preface this, there are reasons both for and against picking any of these four endings which I'm gonna go over, but the worst ending to Phantom Liberty, I think, is the King of Swords. The mm. one where you first side with Somi, fight your way through the orbital air spaceport, inadvertently triggering a huge massacre with many innocents caught in the crossfire, and then, after all that fighting and suffering on Somi's behalf, do a full U-turn right at the end. Either because you realize she betrayed us, or you just don't want to kill Sol and read, instead handing her back over to the NUSA to become their prisoner once again. We can then, if we so choose, be given the Neural Matrix in return, unlocking the Phantom Liberty ending ending, or we can just hand her over for nothing. Which, from a gameplay standpoint, is the most pointless thing you could probably do. So, breaking it down, this ending, overall, is not the best case scenario for us, the player, any of the major characters, or indeed the rest of the world. From a shallow gameplay standpoint as well, we miss out on Reed's pariah pistol and the Quantum Tuna Cyberware. We only get those from sending Somi to the moon. For V, I would say it's the least rewarding path. Again, we struggle through hell, where we may as well have just handed her over to begin with. Mm. What was the point of going through so much, only to decide, when nearly a few feet away from our destination, to just give it all up? Which, of course, sucks for Somi as well, more so than any other ending. To provide her with the hope of escape in the first place, only to snatch it away again. And I'd say, if you're going the route of betraying her, you might as well do so from the off. For King of Pentacles, at least, the other end where she returns to the NUSA, it becomes a choice between whether to actually kill her or not. A more complicated and excusable choice to make either way than here. And I know that sounds bad before explaining, but just for now, trust me. Here, we're essentially saving our own hide at the last second, and yeah, okay, I suppose reads as well, and essentially throwing Somi under the bus. And sure, she did the same to us first, lying about the Neural Matrix, it's not completely unjustified us turning her in, but it's still a dick move to make, especially this late in the game. As for Reed, I'd actually say it's the second best outcome for him after reviewing them all. See, because meeting with him afterwards at a Choo Choo station, we can see Reed beginning to question whether what we did was right. I can't sleep. I'm trying to break things down. Keep asking myself. And I don't know, but maybe you do. I'd say this journey of realization is taken furthest for him in the ending where Somi dies, King of Cups, whilst in the ending where we side with him the whole way, King of Pentacles, there's not even a glimmer of realization or moral questioning there. Though, flashing forward two years for a second, an opportunity we only get after King of Swords or King of Pentacles, Reed does seem the same in both instances by that point, in the brief interaction we have with him. And I suppose it's confirmed then that for both of these, he stayed on at Langley, working for the NUSA. Though I'd wager behind the scenes, Reed probably doesn't follow his ideals as blindly after King of Swords as he still does in King of Pentacles. As for Myers, despite getting Somi in this one like she wants, she's also just caused some major issues for herself by triggering the massacre at the Orbital Air spaceport, mm. securing an asset at the cost of potentially starting a war. So she neither fully wins or loses for this one. And depending on your attitude towards Myers, whether you just want to tell her where she can stick 
like it or do empathize a little with the position she's in, this ending is good for neither of those outlooks. Mm. Telling her where to stuff it is most satisfyingly done to her face in the King of Cups ending, whereas if you want to stay on her good side, this obviously isn't the choice for that either. And a War of Nations would likely harm many more innocents whilst potentially just consolidating her power in mm. the long run, what with wartime measures. The only person who possibly benefits from this ending the most then is Alex, who obviously suffers most and immediately if we betray Songbird. In this ending, mm. we don't actually know what happens to her for sure, just that she survives. Though we do get more insight in a different ending that we'll get to, but essentially she'll have things either go a bit better, a bit worse, or roughly the same as that one. And I'd wager it's the same, but again, we'll get to it. As for the rest of the world in this ending, well, I did a recent video breaking down the wider consequences and hidden secrets of both ending paths, mm. so I won't go into masses of detail there again, but essentially the massacre at the spaceport is hugely devastating. So mm. many people lose loved ones, there's some specific stories on that hidden in shards throughout, and a memorial upon returning there with a very long list of names. Mm. And of course, this at least is entirely avoidable by us, if we pick to betray Songbird. Mm. King of Swords and King of Pentacles, after all, wind up being more or less the same result in the end, so if you can live with betraying Somi and want to get that tower main ending, you can achieve that without causing this immediately devastating event. Mm. Of course, there's arguments on the other side of this. Somewhat damaged, potentially, has us bring a rogue AI into the world and hasten destroying the border between our realm and theirs, the Black Wall, but that's less of a definitive given, unlike all these deaths. So overall, from a loot standpoint, firstly, this is by far the poorest ending, with mm. nothing you can't get from a different one. Additionally, regardless of which characters you do and don't want to support here, there are also better outcomes for any one of them. Including V, I'd say, who again has to become a bit of an asshole to do such a 180 at the last second. Though all that factored into play, it's also the only ending where things wind up sort of okay for just about all the main characters. V gets what they want, Reed begins to see the error of his ways, Myers probably does alright from this, and Alex gets to live. In fact, just this once, everybody lives. And sure, Songbird returns to the NUSA, probably with no hope of ever gaining freedom, which does suck for her, but then, still being alive, you never fully know what will happen in the future. And the door remains open, just a crack, for the possibility of eventual freedom. It's just unlikely. And it's also probable that nothing will change for the better, really, in the lives of any of our characters for this one. Mm. I'm glad I didn't pit that ending. So, whilst the King of Swords is very much a so-so ending, King of Cups is a lot more polarizing. There's definitely strong reasoning out there for this being the overall best outcome. Handsome Tez actually has a great video arguing why this is the best, and I'd highly recommend giving that a watch too. Okay. This is the ending, wherein we first side with Reed, attack the MaxTac convoy, descend into Sinusure facility, spend about an hour hiding from this terrifying piece of metal, and then at the oh, final yeah. moments where Somi begs for death, we, being a merciful merc, oblige. Now, at first glance, this easily appears to be the worst ending. Mm. Sony dying removes any hope of her living freely after this, obviously. Myers is none too happy with our actions, which shuts us off from getting the NUSA's help in the ending ending, though they do still take Sony's body back with mm. them to probe for anything that could still be useful. After all, the woman was still a walking, talking super weapon of forbidden potential, possessed by a literal demon who could wipe entire armies with nothing but a look. And I suppose when you put it that way, that, I'd argue, is a level of power nobody should have in their possession. Mm. Not the NUSA, not Mr. Blue Eyes, who I'll get to, nor anyone else. From a story perspective, this ending doesn't guarantee fully shutting off Blackwall tech. After all, we ourselves can bring two Blackwall weapons back to the surface. Though, whilst they are still dangerous, the power they hold is a lot more contained than Sony demonstrates herself to be. For us, the player, or V, there isn't a ton to be gained from this ending, definitely less than King of Wands or Pentacles, though unlike like the Killing Moon Path, we do obtain pretty much all the unique gear available from Somewhat Damaged before reaching this choice. And this path, on the whole, is a lot richer in terms of loot than the Killing Moon, with extras like the Fang Knife, Iconic Crowbar, and of course a Rebus and Kanto Blackwall weapons. Again, many more details in the Ending Secrets video, which I realised I had to make after starting this one, given the sheer volume of obscure details which wouldn't have fit in here. Also, there's one thing this ending does better than any other. And after seeing Maya's impartiality to the massacre at Tycho Terminal in the other timeline, it feels pretty freaking good to deny her her prize and then do this. Fuck you, Myers. Done with your bullshit. It's 
scrap up this charade. All right. I can't deny you tried to help her. Annoyingly, she does maintain that cool composure and even gives us money, which is belittling, but still, you can tell underneath the facade she is very pissed off. It's not necessarily the best ending for defying Myers, but it is the best for facing her down and saying a great big screw you and everything you stand for. And if we assume that Songbird does remain enslaved forever, if recaptured, then this is the second best ending for her, or potentially even the best, depending on what happens when she gets to the moon. Death is not the freedom she'd hoped for, of course, but I suppose we could liken it to the devil ending in our case, versus the ones where we presumably eventually die. Because world-changing consequences aside there, it's widely accepted that V is better off dead and free than having their soul ensnared by Arasaka. The person who benefits most from King of Cups, though, is surprisingly Reed, who basically has a similar realization as in the King of Swords ending, only this time it's even stronger. And following on from initially being very cold with us during Leave in Silence, when we meet at the Bastard basketball court a few days later, he straight up says this. I wanted to tell you in person. You were right, V. I lost partners, friends, the trust of my superiors. Everything I believed in, built my life on, gone in seconds. All because I believed you'd help me save Sony. It's a weirdly backhanded sense of gratitude. It doesn't feel genuine in the sense that Reed is thanking us by acknowledging we made him fail and lose everything. By placing faith in us, he lost Alex, Somi, and yes, the trust of the NUSA. But in a way, this kind of draws parallels to the message we received from Takamura in the Phantom Liberty ending, who also says, because of us, the foundations upon which he built his life utterly collapsed, explaining that we were very strong medicine, which, whilst incredibly bitter, woke him up from the bullshit life he was living. So in the same vein, by forcing Reed to fail in his mission, he's pretty much fully woken up to the fact that the ideals upon which he's built his life were a bunch of complete bullshit. I got nothing to lose now. I might be able to gain something for once though. All because of you, or thanks to you. Not sure which is more fitting. So, by hitting rock bottom, the guy is finally free to reinvent himself as whoever he wants to be. Something that either can't be, or just evidently isn't, in any of the other three paths. And remember, we let Somi die, who on multiple occasions during the Killing Moon path, Reed was prepared to shoot us on sight in order to protect. Mm. The amount he cared about her survival is insane, so to then turn around and really genuinely thank us for what we did after the fact, that must have been one hell of a wake-up call for him. And I have no doubt that the King of Cups is the most hopeful or liberating ending for Solomon Reed. But of course, that comes at the price of Alex getting murdered by Hansen, mm. losing out on her happy ending, and instead getting just a columbarium plaque reading, quote, not the retirement you dreamed of, but the kind that fate dealt. I hope you can forgive me, and thanks for everything. End quote. The entire somewhat damaged path is obviously the worst choice for Alex fans, but again, the brilliant thing about these four endings is none of them are totally ideal for everybody. Same as the ones from the main game, I suppose. I, for one, do reserve a shred of hope that one day, a living Somi might be capable again to wrestle free from the NUSA's control. But obviously that's completely off the table after doing this, unless they somehow resurrected her. Though to counter that argument, by reviewing her memories seen throughout Somewhat Damaged, she's clearly been subjected to a lot. Not just physical pain, but also mental torments and memory loss. Being forced by Myers to reach beyond the Black Wall on multiple occasions, and suffering a similar similar fates as the various netrunners who worked at Sinashur. Indeed, the reason she's practically full Borg at this point is because of the synaptic damage inflicted over time by the Black Hole, necessitating the replacements of, well, probably everything aside from her brain, piece by piece. She's more machine now than woman. And I'll be honest, my initial reaction to her request of death was a strong resounding no. I couldn't fathom how ending somebody's suffering could ever actually be the better option. Though I suppose that's me following the same code of ethics as Reed, thinking myself the hero for simply keeping somebody alive, despite how much they're suffering. I didn't want Somi's death on my conscience, imagining instead that one day in the future she'll be better and will thank us for not granting her request. But realistically, it's hard to see it going that way. No, please. Whisper instead. Leaving me to a fate worse than, than death. Oh, Somi, 
Definitely the most overtly tragic ending this one, with no definitive good outcome for anybody, and probably the toughest call that there is to make in the heat of the moment. But, as far as the story goes, there are those strong arguments for it being the best choice, which, again, Tez has a great video on. Number two. Though King of Cups isn't the only tough one to mull over, and whilst King of Wands certainly has its fair share of dire consequences and unsolved riddles, it is, at the same time, the only hopeful ending for Somi. We of course achieve it by siding with her in Firestarter, and then, on the bridge to the shuttle, refusing to surrender her back, and instead making the painful call of killing Reed. Mm. Song departs for the moon, no doubt to be received by another proxy of Mr. Blue Eyes, whose intentions are as of yet still unclear. But looking closely, he's been heavily involved in this whole operation, securing Somi her passage in the first place, as well as appearing not once, but twice, watching over events during the mission, even managing to reach the train station with his umbrella, mere moments after we waltzed through, deleting everyone in sight with the power of a basilisk. By which I mean the creature that can kill you with a look, not the tank, though that would have done a fine job too. In fact, Blue Eye's intentions could even be more malevolent than the plans Myers had. After all, Guy could be a proxy for a legion of tyrannical AIs that mean to wipe Songbird's psyche entirely, and use her still aware body as a vessel by which to bridge the gap between physical and digital space. Hell, he may intend to use her immense power to wrestle control of the moon's mass drivers, bombarding the major settlements of Earth to cripple the global superpowers, and bring about a grand unified world controlled entirely by Night Corp. That is, he could do all of that, but Mr. B's plans have never been so overt before. And indeed, it's far more his MO to operate from the shadows via the use of proxies to slowly and subtly take control of certain key components needed to pull the strings of society with nobody noticing. Memory tampering, back alley demonic possession, blipping people out of existence. Yeah, this guy is very much a wild card, and entrusting Somi to him is essentially what we're doing in this ending, forcing Reed to also pay the ultimate price for the opportunity. The man dies with his ideals still intact, and never gets the opportunity to become a changed man. And who knows, maybe things are better that way. After all, the eye-opening revelations he experiences in King of Cups sound kind of bittersweet, and it's unclear in that ending whether he will go and do a new thing, or simply be unable to leave the system that's been synonymous to his identity for so long. Maybe it's just better to go out now than to live on aware that your ideals are bullshit, but still being unable to let them go. Personally, I certainly don't want him to die, much less administer the killing blow myself, and that is still a huge con of this ending for me. Though it does afford us something nice and different in its place. Whilst the other three endings are capped off meeting with Reed, this one instead involves a final chat and a toast with Alex at her bar, where we also get to listen to a news broadcast broadcast further informing the results of our actions at the spaceports and space travel and losses going into billions of euro dollars these are the sad results of this senseless act of aggression familiar this fucking jabber it's war talk. Today we turn to up. Leslie Wawuda old grunt cut minds to us how to escalate Kenya, shit where hmm. Mr. Wawuda did manage to travel one thing's sure if they jump Mr. at Wawuda, Military you claim to know exactly who's out. responsible for the recent attack on what is clearly the jewel in your corporation's crown. Yes, Night Corp. It must be said. To Night Corp, the space port in Night City is a symbol of yet another failure in their space race against Orbital Air, the leader in orbital technology. Couldn't be sure you they shall. They will destroy us out of envy for our success. This attack was a few... Notice that last subtitle before the TV switches off? This dude's theorizing that Night Corp also had a hand in the attack, mm. as they don't want Orbital Air to travel to Alpha Centauri. Now, I know that Gary the Prophet speaks in metaphors relating to actual goings on in the world, but man, just what if Blue Eyes doesn't want any human migration to Alpha Centauri, since he genuinely is a techno-necromancer hiding out there? Look, I'm sure there's a more accurate truth for all of this, but this is not the video to get into that. Anyway, turns out Alex, despite now being assigned to assassinate us after what we did is actually incredibly chill. Instead, pouring us a drink and saying she'll wait until our own body offs us anyway. Which is nice, I guess, though be interesting to see what she'd have done if we weren't dying. Or indeed, what will happen should we go with the temperance ending after this and leave Johnny to wander around in our body indefinitely. Another perk to this encounter is the ability to drink to a range of characters. And I'd say aside from the revelations we get from Reed in the other endings, this chat with Alex 
Alex for what it is, is the best little aftermath mission of the four. Mm. Until Johnny reminds us exactly what we've done in this scenario, that is. Come on, gotta find some new peeps you'll befriend, grow to like, and then murder. And when you put it like that, I suppose we do have more blood on our hands directly in this ending than the rest of them. The price of sticking to our guns, of course, was that we eventually had to use them. Though in my humble opinion, and admittedly with the benefit of hindsight, if you're gonna choose to help songbirds, then you may as well, you know, do that. Even once realizing that she has been having us on the entire time, playing literally everyone to the end of purely staying alive. And even though she really does royally screw us over, I think myself, and many of you, still feels somewhat empathetic towards her. Sure, she could have been honest from the start about the nature of the neural matrix, that it did only have one use, but she needed our help. And upon learning the truth, we'd have had every right and reason to just walk away, what with this no longer being of any benefit to us. Or indeed, we might have even attempted to steal it for ourselves. It doesn't really matter in the end, actually. We learn in the King of Pentacles ending that her mind was too far gone for the neural matrix to actually work on her. And that does call into question just what's going to happen to her upon arriving at the moon. Though in my head, presumably Mr. B has some kind of resource that can help her, given the fact he has a similar offer for us in the sun ending. Topping off Alex's story for this ending though, we do get a postcard from Monte Carlo, which has got to be nicer than Dogtown. And indeed, Alex's ending for King of Wands may very well be the only one that is confirmed for any of the characters to be distinctively happy. So for pure Alex and Songbird fans, this is probably the best ending. Again, we don't know exactly what happens to Alex in King of Swords, though at a guess it's most likely the same thing. Now, Myers in this ending stands to lose the most. Well, other than Reed. Losing Somi to probably the whims of Night Corp, and also possibly starting a war for herself. Which, again, could provide her more power, but also potentially result in her deposition if things get out of hand. At a shallow level, with this ending too, we get the only silenced tech pistol in the game, Pariah, which, I mean, silently shooting people through walls is certainly a power powerful way to play, and only in this ending too will we receive the Quantum Tuner a few days later, by the sofa where we chatted with Songbird, with this text appearing to confirm that she's okay, but like that's by no means entirely clear. We just know that her memories are intact thanks to the way she referred to this place in the text. Hell, she could have been turned into a construct to protect her memories, and her body stored away as just another weapon powered now by AI. Again, Blackwall demonic possession is not something unfamiliar to Night Corp. The blood the ritual cyber psycho and the fact that that branch of maelstrom have dealings with night corp does tie that together but anyway the quantum tuner is decent so i'd say the gear from somewhat damaged is overall still better and i do have or will soon have videos breaking down reviewing and ranking each of those various items overall it's a pretty close call for this one being in second it is of course the best ending for somi probably best for alex almost certainly worst for myers almost worst for reed and sort of okay-ish for us. In the end, it's the right thing to do once you've gone down this path and does at least render the chaos at the spaceport not entirely pointless. A lot of people think this is the canon ending as well, thanks to the inclusion of Mr. Blue Eyes, and I agree. It would probably be the most interesting one to get expanded upon, maybe with a visit to the moon in a sequel. Though, personally, I'm holding out hope that they'll somehow manage to weave in certain variations between this game and the next, and introduce save ports to account for our varying big choices. Like they did across the Witcher series, but we'll see. <sighs> I have yet to see South by Andrew Rogers, by the way. Yes, I have not seen it yet. I mean, like, hey, look, I have so much to catch up on. I have so much TV shows to catch up on. It's crazy. Now, I know, this at the top is a controversial choice. To be honest, saying any ending is best is controversial, but especially this one. So hear me out. Because yes, remaining Maya's little lapdog throughout this entire process is arguably more spineless than the two previous choices. Though, firstly, successfully navigating Sinusure facility clearly warrants the existence of plenty of remaining spine. And second, this one provides overall the best gameplay experience for Phantom Liberty, in my opinion. Not only does it include the one wildly left of field, oh, yeah. but nonetheless brilliant alien isolation inspired somewhat damaged mission, yeah. but it's also the only way to experience the new main ending after that. Yeah. And I actually told this ending by the way. 
edition, which itself certainly isn't the best overall ending ending, that's another video coming soon, but it is a totally new experience, and a huge chunk of Phantom Liberty that I think anyone who bought the expansion ought to play at some point. And reaching that ending this way, sticking to our guns and going along with Reed the entire time, it's more honourable, I would argue, than pulling a fast 180 on So Me at the last second, even after the revelation that you have been duped. At least this way, we proceed from the get-go with the potentially misinformed but still noble intentions of trying to do what we think is best for her, as opposed to bringing her to the cusp of freedom only to finally choose to save our own hide. Story aside though, just if somebody asked me and said they only intend to play through Phantom Liberty once, what path should they pick, then I would say this one for the most complete experience. Mm. Unless of course they utterly detest horror games. Don't forget as well that choosing the Killing Moon also involves missing the handsome boss fights. Maybe again that's a good thing for some of you, but in my eyes it's a chunk of game you then don't get to play. Mm. On a personal level, this is also the path I chose first time around, and yeah. I'm really glad it was, because it meant I had the most important gear and experiences logged onto my main save file, as opposed to the branching saves I created for the other endings, which I then hopped off of after completing. Both we the player and V then stand to gain the most from this ending, probably on the whole. And it even feels, maybe more self-righteous, but less selfish certainly, than King of Swords. Though of course, for most of the other characters, it is not the best still. Somi does heartbreakingly return to the custody of the NUSA, with Reed even suggesting she may return to active duty. Alex obviously doesn't get out of this alive, and Reed may think this is the best outcome for him, but as we've established, it certainly isn't. And for this one, Reed just continues on, never ever seeing the flaws in his ideals. In fact, the only other character for whom this is the best ending is Rosalind Myers, who gets exactly what she wants with minimum collateral damage, and is so proud of our work in fact that she'll even award us with an NUSA distinction, which we can immediately give away to a homeless man if we so choose, mirroring what Somi did after receiving the same thing. One final question I want to explore with this ending though, is just how much of a threat is the NUSA to the rest of the world when now in possession of the Blackwall weapon that is Song Somi? Is there actually a dire hidden consequence here that we have delivered? And I'm gonna guess, based on how sensible Militech got when it came to dealing with the Sinusure facility eventually, and given that Militech and the United States government are practically the same thing, then I'm gonna theorize that they're a somewhat trustworthy corporation to hold this power. Still probably better off not having it for certain. I think Netwatch are really the only ones who can be fully trusted with it. Though I think on balance, hopefully, the NUSA won't use Songbird to accidentally destroy the world. Probably. At least no more so than we are already doing, running around with their Kanto or Rebus weapons, feeding data back to an AI with intentions to do that very thing. So that's my order, based on a number of varying factors of worst to best for Phantom Liberty's endings, mm. but obviously within what I've said are various arguments to choose all of them, which if you have the time, I would heavily recommend doing and experiencing anyway. So please comment below which you think is the best Phantom Liberty ending and why, because this is something we could talk about for days, and has been one of my favourite concepts to explore in a video. Again, if you want to learn even more about these endings, then check out my Hidden Secrets accompaniment to this. Huge thanks to my paper. Okay, I might check that out. All right. All right, great recap, Sam Baron. Great recap, because, yeah, Fancy Liberty was one of the best DLCs I've played ever, man, because, man, ooh, wow. That choice, had to, like, to have to betray Songbird, Songbird or be on side with Songbird was, ooh, it was difficult. It was absolutely difficult to choose, and I was like, oh, wow. What were the outcomes where that was going to happen either between the former and the latter? It's like, it's crazy. It's been crazy. But overall, great video, Sam Baron. Shout out to you, bro. Keep up the great work with these. So, Hot Squad, that is my conclusion of my Heartbreaker recap reaction to Sam Bram's Cyberpunk 2077 Fence Liberty recap ending. So, if you enjoyed this, please hit that button and come share your thoughts. Have you played the DLC? Have you played the game overall? And how would you rate it for 1 out of 10? And, yeah, overall, Great video, great video, Sam Bram. Love this, love this, love this a lot. So, Hot Squad, please stay tuned because I'm a Hotbanger recap marathon. I continue with Watch Mojo's Top 30 Video Games of the Century recap. So, Hot Squad, please stay tuned.